What's up, Internet? Robert T. Garden here today with some sort of a tea garden something. I don't know if it's a tutorial or a tech review, but these tiny pieces of silicon and plastic run my life. As a visual creator, my entire life, my revenue, the way I support my family is tied up into these small SD cards, the hard drives that back them up. And I am not a very anxious person, ladies and gentlemen. Usually, I am cool as a cucumber, ice water running through my veins. But when I tell you I get anxious thinking about the fact that I support my family by the data that is captured on these tiny pieces of plastic and silicon, well, I wouldn't be lying. So why make this video? Today what I really want to talk about is that as we roll into this new era of high resolution cameras, most cameras are capable of 4K including the phones in your pocket. Black Magic, Red, all these people are saying 6K, 8K capable with the Canon EOS R coming out soon. Data and the size of these files has increased, well, four times if you go 4K to 8K. I mean, it's really just, you know, that's how the math works. And so if you're thinking about how you're going to do data management with these types of things, and the only solution you have is, uh, you know, the thing sitting behind me over there. Look, let me reiterate what I'm saying. If you're being paid to do a job and the way that you're backing up your footage is only on the internal storage of your computer, you're asking for trouble. Now, without additional storage options, you risk losing footage. And as you progress in your creative career, losing footage is just a risk that you simply can't take. Believe me, I know I've lost hard drives from clients and that conversation is not fun. Now, the appropriate solution for this problem is to get a RAID set up, R-A-I-D. And that'll give you duplicate backups of all the different footage that you put together. But RAIDs are not cheap. A uh, standard one costs about 3000 bucks, and when you're first starting out, uh, that's money that could be used elsewhere for gear, lighting, lenses, cameras, etc. And things that definitely uh, you could be spending a lot better money on. Now the cheapest solution I've seen to this is a Western Digital product uh, that has a bunch of different swappable discs that you can put in and out. Um, up to 40 terabytes or something like that. Uh, and it's not very expensive. The base product in and of itself is about 800 bucks. But I don't necessarily know that I would actually be doing work off of those drives, mainly just using them as a backup. I couldn't actually edit off of them because they're not fast enough. So how do you solve this hard drive conundrum of needing space, but having a budget and all these different things? I, I think I have the answer for you. Thank you guys. So as you may be aware, there are three main types of hard drives. There's HDDs, SSDs, and M2s. Now, M2s are really only for inside a computer. Um, I don't think that there is actually an external M2 option. Um, I've got one in my big PC build that you may have seen, uh, and they're just lightning fast. They come in, I think, about a terabyte, maybe two option. They're not very cheap, but I have one in my PC to just run all of my programs off of because they're so quick. The recall is incredibly fast. So that combined with a really fast RAM system uh, gives you a pretty quick machine to work off of, which is nice. Um, the next fastest option is SSD. They're solid state drives. And really there's no spinning components on the inside of them. Older hard drive systems have some type of reader. It almost looks like a vinyl record player for you weird hippies that shop in Urban Outfitters. I still don't understand this anymore. Uh, but they're almost like a vinyl system where there's a reader and a spinning disc that's on the inside um, that's where the data is stored. An SSD, a solid state, has no spinning components to it at all. It really just looks like a, kind of a glorified thumb drive, the old school thumb drives that you could get. Uh, but they come in much bigger capacities, one, two, five terabytes if you can find them. Um, they're real quick. Most of them, especially the external side, write to between three and 500 megs per second, which makes them really ideal for editing drives because they're so quick and that transfer of data uh, is something that actually works really well with high resolution footage like 4Ks. The next ones are the HDDs, um, and those are those spinning discs that I was talking about. They come in a lot larger capacities and they're much cheaper, but the only problem is, is that they're slow. They don't read or write very fast. 
So if you're using them to edit 4K footage or multi-stream, multi-cam footage, they tend to glitch out and get very strange. You get frame skipping, which becomes incredibly frustrating and something that you would have to then enact proxies for or even shoot in lower resolution footage because you don't have the capacity to edit faster footage. It's not your computer, it's the hard drive and the speed that the hard drive reader writes that's the problem. So this is my solution. What I do is I have these HDD drives that we were looking at earlier. This is a five terabyte option. And I use these just mainly for mass storage. What I do is I take my shoots and I back them up onto two of these different shoots. I just did something in Denver last weekend um, and I took all of the footage, the two, three different cameras that I had, all of the external audio, the drones, the GoPros, all the different stuff. And I backed up an entire copy onto two of these different drives. They live in two different places. These then get stored inside my fire safe, which we talked about. Uh, and then what I do with those um, is I save a copy onto an SSD drive, a portable SSD drive that I have. So effectively these become the main kind of backup systems. These are cheap. I think five terabytes I get for a hundred bucks. So now this is where most of my footage just kind of lives and stays as a backup. And I use an SSD as a working copy. Speaking of SSD, this one's 500 gigs, which uh, may seem small, but most of the projects that I'm working on, because I'm working on them one at a time, are don't exceed 500 gigs. There's only been a few times where that's actually happened, and I just move into a proxy workflow at that point. Um, so 500 gigs, and what I do is I just pass my projects back and forth between this SSD copy and this HDD copy. Man, I'm like getting all strung up on these words here. Um, so I work off of this. The reason I work off of this is because it read and writes at 500 megs a second, like I said, so it's lightning quick. That combined with the fact that it's a USB-C type connector, which is also very fast, makes for a very seamless editing space, right? I don't really have any frame drops or anything like that. It renders quickly, it exports quickly. That combined with the speed of my computer makes me a very happy camper. I don't have to go pulling my non-existent hair out of my head because the things are too slow. Now again, these things are fast as fuck. They're 500 megs a second. That's literally five times faster than most SD cards in cameras read and write. The SanDisk Extremes write at 95 megs a second. And so you can tell that these things are just screaming fast. And so my whole process again is that I work off of this. This is my working drive. And then I shuttle my stuff back onto my bigger, slower, cheaper HDD hard drive. And that's what I do. I just pass these things back and forth between them. Now there's a way of doing that fairly quickly. Um, you can use a program for each. Uh, there's one called clone copy for Mac. It's made by a company called bomb bitch hell of a name, um, but my main flow is not on a Mac. So what I've been using is a company called Acronis or Acronis. Uh, they have a product called True Image. This is not a sponsored ad at all. This is actually really something I'm just testing out recently so that I can just click a button and have seamless transfer back and forth between the two drives. I want the most up-to-date copies of my project files, um, any renders or rendering files that I have to be back and forth and seamless so I'm not looking for files all the time that I can't find, right? But again, the two HDDs and the one 500 megasecond SSD drive that I have comes in around $300, $325, which is a far cry from the 3000 plus that you would see for a typical RAID system. Again, that's something that even I'm working towards because that's really the proper way of doing it. But when we're on a budget and we're starting out and we're creating our own path, but we have the need to back up projects for clients, um, it's better for us to take that 2700 extra dollars and spend it on lights, spend it on a lens, spend it on things that are going to really make your product that much better so that you can attract better clients that would pay you more money so that eventually you can afford to buy that ridiculous RAID system that everyone online is talking about that probably maxed out their stupid credit cards just to buy. Right now you're cash flow positive, you've got multiple ways of backing up your stuff and your stuff looks sick because you've got great gear that really matters to do the job right. All right, now we We've already talked about this like share subscribe thing you know what to do we're not going to go over that now this is robert t garden and we'll see you in the next one thank you peace